There she goes. I've been catching blue reds for a long time. I love catching blue reds because you really don't know what you're gonna catch. From a torpedo red or a trophy red over 48 inches or your personal best. But one of my favorite reasons why I really enjoy catching blue reds is because of the different types of environments you can catch them. From the long stretches of the beach to the long jetties, the bulkheads, the piers, really anywhere. But one of the questions that I am always asked is how do you catch big bull reds? After reading over 500 comments on YouTube asking how to and over 1.9 thousand requests, I decided to make the ultimate guide. Before we continue, if you want to be elite all year round, you want to catch long and hard, and you want to catch fish with style, please click on the subscribe button and hit that bell notification for some of the crispiest fishing videos out here. Welcome to Beach Bomber Fishing, and this is how to catch your bull reds. Where to fish for bull reds? I'm gonna start out by teaching you a small segment of how to read the beach. It's very simple, okay? Now, when you're out surf fishing, what I like to do is I like to go out there on days that are not super rough where the entire beach is white camping, but you also don't wanna go out on a flat day. You need to find a day when the wind is blowing at least 10 to 15 miles and you can clearly see that there's a trough which is the area where there is no waves the sandbar is where the waves are breaking so what you have to do the best thing i say is i like to cast on the back end of sandbars because that is where the reds or any predatory fish actually like to push the bait on it and that's where the bull reds are going to attack they also like to attack where there's a cut now cuts are harder to see from the naked eye especially from far away from the beach you can see them better with the drone so what i'm going to show you is here when you have a set of breaking waves you're going to see white caps white foam on top when you see a gap in between those breaking waves that's white that's a cut if you cast right in that area i guarantee you that is one of the best spots to cast for bull reds you also have to take the tides into consideration. When you have an incoming tide, you can fish what I call the wade gut. That is the first part of the beach that has no waves. You can catch bait there, tons of bait, mullet, whiting, sand trout, everything that bull reds love to eat. And what does that mean? When the tide is high, you don't even have to cast for. You can use your seven foot combo, cast right in there, your Zepco, your Shakespeare, cast it right in there and you can catch a bull red when the tide is slacked or outgoing you might have to cast further from the first into past the second sandbar on the back end let me say what you don't want to do you do not want to cast exactly on top of the sandbar if you cast right on top of the sandbar all you're gonna do is catch stinger all day guaranteed that's all you're gonna catch the stinger is allowed to be on top of those sandbars this is why a lot of fishermen when they're out waiting at the beach a lot of people get stung by these stingrays and they're almost always walking on the sandbar, all right? So that is a very simple explanation on how to read the beach. Cast your bait where there are no breaking waves. If you get better at reading the beach, know this, you have to cast that bait behind the breaking wave or close to the middle, all right? That's a very simple explanation. I do have a video on how to read the beach that is extremely informative, all right? Link will be in the description. Now, when you're fishing passes, passes are harder because the current going in the pass is really heavy. You're going to need an 8-ounce weight. So basically, when you're fishing a pass, what I like to do is I like to fish an outgoing tide. So basically, what you do, like if you're fishing San Luis Pass, don't get in the water, by the way. Too many people die. Do not get in the water, all right? Don't do it. You know, do not get it in the pass. Cast out as far as you can into the middle of the pass and you're going to catch something, especially on an outgoing tide. Piers. Same thing with piers, you know. I like to fish the ends of the tee heads on piers, so basically cast out as far as possible out to the front. Catching bull reds is much more difficult at the beach because that's when you really have to look for structure. Now, in the ways of casting, 
If you're going to be fishing a jetty, that's another story. Because <laughs> when you're fishing a jetty, that is some hard fishing. First of all, you got to at least cast your bait well over 50 yards. If you don't have a rod that can handle a 50 yard cast, that means that you're going to need an 8 ounce fit because the current at the jetties are always strong, especially if you're fishing the channel sites. If you're fishing those sites, you might even need a 10 ounce weight. <laughs> I've been out there and I, people have watched my videos that I've been out there when the wind is blowing 20, 25, almost 30 and the waves are breaking way over the, over the jetty and I'm fishing in the channel. Those fish are moving out and you have to use really heavy weight when you're out there. I like to fish the channels at the jetties, but you also need the right gear. I don't recommend fishing for bull reds at the jetty if you don't have the right gear, okay? If you're gonna be fishing with bait, you gotta make sure you cast that bait well over 50 yards or else when you're reeling in, you're gonna get snagged immediately. We don't need no more trash down there, all right? No more. There's so much line down there, you're just polluting at the bottom of the ocean at that point. All right, second of all, you gotta have the right footwear. Get you a pair of nice corkers, the River Ops. This is the corkers that I wear, they've lasted me a year, never have fallen, and it's helped me land so many fish without even needing a gaff. Sometimes there's days that you're gonna need a gaff, but if you're gonna be gaffing bull reds, don't do it. Cover the tip, all right? You don't wanna hurt those bull reds, all right? You don't wanna take them home and eat them, they're full of worms, but if you are legally taking a bull red, then to each their own, okay? I can't knock you for the food or whatever you're eating. But anyways, jetty fishing for bull reds is hard, especially if you're gonna be fishing with bait. If you're fishing with lures for reds at the jetty, same thing, you gotta get your lure way out there. And the thing about fishing for bull reds at the jetty is that it's difficult with lures because most of the time reds are at the bottom of the jetty. So you gotta jig and roll and troll your bait at the bottom. You can get snagged, of course, like I said, cast your bait as far as you can, jig it, reel it in, bait, same thing, all right? But the jetty is one of the best places to fish, but also one of the hardest places to fish for bull reds. All right, what is going on, everybody? So, one of the first things that I like to do when I'm fishing, I don't just go out and put a leader on and cast it out. I have a setup, so I have a process that I like to do. So what I do, of course, I tie my shock leader, or whatever you want to call it. I got an upright knot here. Check it out, y'all. And I got about like 10 yards of this. All right, 10 yards. 50 pound, I like to match my braid pound with the mono. So this is 50 pounds, 50 pounds, all right? Most of the time, I don't fish with anything over 50 pounds on them because of surf fishing. Unless I'm like shark fishing, I might do 65. Then on my big 50 wise, I use 100. Here's a third coast beach bomber leader right here. I got it tied on, clinch knot. One of the most important things that I like to do before, I gotta make sure my leaders are tight. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna get my hook, I'm gonna attach it to this, right there to that anchor. I got it almost on max drag on there. The knot was good. So was the knot from the braid to the mono, all right? The second thing I like to do is, every time before I go out fishing, I like to cast my setups, just wait, get the line wet, it'll remove some kinks, because if you don't do that and you put a bait on ready to fish, you might get a bird's nest, all right? So this is the second thing I do, this is the third thing I do.
When it comes to fishing gear, there is a vast array and different varieties of combos that you could use to fish for bull reds. So myself, I do mainly shore fishing, jetty fishing, surf fishing, pier fishing. These types of fishing require longer rods. So if you're gonna do those types of fishing, smallest rod that I'm gonna use, especially if I'm fishing with bait, it's gonna be a 10 foot rod. Most 10 foot rods that you're gonna find are gonna be rated between two to eight ounces. And that's perfect. You don't always need to cast out a big bait. I recommend a good budget rod would be an Akuma Longitude. Three to eight ounces, 10 foot, 11 foot, or 12 foot, that rod can take a beating. I've had a bunch of those before in the past, and they worked. One of the best economic rod you can get out there. And above that is the Okuma Solaris, the spinning or conventional. Those rods are beasts. They have all the right components at the right price. I've had a lot of friends with those rods. Even myself, I've had them. Nearly indestructible. Great budget rods with all quality components, Fuji components on them. That's very important. Also, if you can spend a little more money, a good rod to get above that is the Shimano Speedmaster. They have the spinning and the conventional. The conventional Speedmaster is pretty badass because it has a trigger grip, which it comes in really useful when you're reeling in and when you're casting. You know, that little trigger at the bottom on a big conventional rod, it's almost unheard of. You don't get that anymore. There used to be other Shimano. I think the old Tiralejo had that uh, grip at the bottom. But that helps you so much when you're casting and to grip in when you're reeling in for a fish. All right. Above that, then you got the Ocean Master. Of course, I did a review on the Bass Pro Ocean Master Surf Rod. Great rod for the price. All components. Nearly indestructible also. That's from the price range from 170 to 200 bucks. And above that, I always recommend the Breakaway HDX. I have multiple HDXs, conventional, spinning, and that rod is amazing it's has power that is unbelievable at the price you're not going to get any better up until you get to like pfft, i don't know man <laughs> for that price and the quality you get on the breakaway hdx you're never going to break it people are landing big sharks with it bull reds are casting 10 ounces with bait like i do with this rod nearly indestructible and then above that you can have a custom rod 10 foot 11 foot 12 foot it's really up to you but most of the time, what you don't need a really custom, expensive rod to catch spool reds. Like I said, you know, I go from the 10 to 12 foot range. Anything could at least cast six ounces, all right? That's going to be your ne next important factor. Make sure that your rod can cast at least six ounces. Like I said, there's going to be those days when the current is really ripping out there. If you have a rod that can't handle casting three or four or five, six ounces, your bait, you're not going to be able to stick it in the bottom. And you're gonna be drifting on the beach. And that's annoying. You're gonna be reeling in, and then you could also cross other people's lines, all right? So important, you need a rod over 10 feet that can at least cast six ounces. That's what I recommend. Most people that I know like to fish with spinning reels. So what I look for in a spinning reel, I'm very particular when it comes to spinning reels. I look for reels that are IPX rated. If a reel is not IPX7 or 8 rated, I personally am not going to buy it unless it has a long casting spool. Like the Okuma Surf 8000, the Okuma uh, Rockaway, those have a long spool. You don't even need to get wet. You don't need to get in the water because those long spools, it's going to allow you to have a longer cast. If you don't have a long casting spool, then you're definitely going to need some water protection. I like to use the Shimano Spheros. I have the old school one back from 2014, IPX7 rated. I got it brand new back in 2014. It still works. Real smooth, loud clicker, the drag still works. Only been in service like two times and that was only because it got dunked in the sand. And then after that, I got the Shimano Saragossa. That one is IPX8 rated. I, I dunked that one not too long ago. It went into the sand. The clicker got messed up, but I got home and took off some of the sand and cleaned it up. Brand new. Still works really good. The clicker sounds really amazing still. And that's one of the things also, if you're looking for a spinning reel, I look for a loud clicker. It's important because if you're out at the beach, the waves are breaking. If you don't hear your clicker, you can lose a fish. You can even get spooled. So that's important. Look for a long casting spinning reel with a long spool. Or if you're going to get a spinning reel that does not have a long casting spool, I please consider getting a reel that's IPX7 or 8 rated. 
when it comes to conventional reels, I look for reels that are magged. As you can see, most of my conventional reels are magged. My Avid SXs, my MXLs, even my Dive Saltist is custom magged. And the reason I do that is because like I am can cast so far and hard that I don't have to worry about getting a burstness most of the time. I just have to maybe thumb it once when it looks like it's gonna overspin and that's it. All right, so this uh, Avid MXL, we got, we got a, a, a 10 ounce weight on here. We got about 150 yards out. So one of the things about it is when the current is really strong, when you use a heavy weight, that current is gonna bring up a bunch of sand on that weight and your weight's really gonna get stuck. All right, so, ah, you see? Mm. Look how much bend I have on my rod. But anyways, you can only reel in so much. I can reel in like continuously for like two minutes. But I know it's not necessary, but one of the nice things about a two-speed reel, put it on low gear, and there you go. Reeling in like nothing. Look at that. Slowly, but you put on the low gear and you can reel in. You don't have that problem anymore. Check it out, how easy. Put on high gear. You gotta reel in. It is entirely possible to reel in a red just on low gear, but what's the, what's the fun in that? A lot of the guys with the nice rods on the piers, they like to do that, but that ain't fun. Weights, when it comes to bull red fishing, that's really gonna depend on the conditions that you're fishing. Right now we're fishing a 15 to 20 mile southeast wind. The current is really bad. Actually, this is east southeast. So the current is really bad. It's just going from west to east hard. And when you fish this, you need big weights. This is what I'm using today. Check it out, y'all. This is a 10 ounce weight right here. 10 ounce weight. It's holding good. But come on, 10 ounces, you know, that's what you're gonna have to use when you're fishing these types of conditions. I mean, look at that, look, it's white capping, the waves are breaking way out there in the horizon. It's white capping, you know, that's, those are really hard conditions to fish. And one of the things about when you fish these conditions is that you have to use so much drag pressure the entire time that your line starts to rub on the sandbars and you can get cut off. And also you might have an occasional shark go through it and rip right through your line. So. This is hard, it's hard to read when you're gonna land a fish also or when a fish has taken your bait because your, your drag pressure is so tight. Generally, a bull red will come and bite your, your lure, I mean your, your bait, and swim off with it real fast when you have light pressure. But when you're using medium, medium drags in this, it's pretty, it's hard. It's hard to tell when you're getting, when you're getting a hit. So there's been times that I've been reeling in and I have a fish on, I didn't even know. So, conditions like this, eight ounces, when you have mild winds, 10 to 15, you can get away with a eight, well, it's, uh, a five, five to eight ounces. And then when there's little to no wind, four ounces, all right? Next up is also one of the most important aspects of bull red fishing, what bait to use. There are several different types of baits that you can use when you're fishing for bull reds. One of the most popular is, of course, mullet. But there's other baits that work just as good or even better, depending on the time of the season, all right? Let me go ahead and start with mullet. Mullet is very easy to get. You can go to your local freshwater, saltwater, or brackish water pond, lake, whatever. You can throw a cast in there, and more than likely, you can catch mullet. Mullet is a great all-around bait. I always have it on me, and I always carry a cast net with me when it comes to mullet fishing. So, when I am surf fishing with mullet and I take my cast net with me, I like to use a five foot to six foot cast net. If I'm at the jetties, I like to use a smaller cast net. And the reason that I like to use a smaller cast net at the jetties is because they're lighter. The weights that are at the bottom of the cast net are light lead, or I think some of them are plastic also. This is gonna be good because once you throw it out there, it doesn't sink as fast. If it sinks fast and you got one of those big casts that are six, seven, eight feet in radius, it has bigger lead, what's gonna happen is it's gonna sink really fast and you're gonna get instantly snagged. So at the beach, five to six foot cast net is great. At the jetties, four to five feet cast net. Anywhere else, 
whatever up to whatever your legal size mainly i think it's like the the biggest you can use is like 10 feet in texas maybe it's even 12 i'm not sure you're gonna have to look that up next up crab i always like to use crab but the thing is that if you're just targeting redfish crab are eaten by <laughs> gaff top drum so drum fishing is great when you're fishing for black drum but if you want to make crab last long quarter it take the shell off cut it in half or into quarters cast it out it's a great bait if you're trying to catch slot reds bull reds and black drum those are the favorite baits that a lot of people like to use also shad shad is a great bait from the summer up until like late fall you can easily get shad from almost anywhere also cast it anywhere you're gonna get shad i like to use the larger shad that shad you can cut in half it's kind of soft the thing about shad is that you have to use what i like to call a bait elastic if you go to breakawaytackle.com they have a bait elastic that you can wrap the shad around on your hook and when you cast it it's not going to fly off shad is very fragile so that bait elastic is going to help it maintain on the hook next up my favorite bait is sand trout i love using sand trout once i catch a sand trout i either throw it out whole alive or i cut it in half fresh the reason i like sand trout is because the big bull reds love to eat sand trout so that's why i like to use a big live sand trout my, one of my PBs was actually caught in a whole life sand trout. I, mean, I think the sand trout that I casted, I was like 18 inches. It was a huge sand trout. But that 50 inch bull red just came up and just swallowed it. Boom, that's it. I landed it. Sand trout is harder to get. Most of the time, you're going to catch sand trout when you're trout fishing or flounder fishing. So if you throw out uh, some uh, shrimp, fish bites, or even any, any lure, you have a chance at catching a sand trout. The next bait that I like to use, and I like to use this in the surf, is whiting. Whiting is almost always abundant in the area, but especially late fall to winter. You can throw out a piece of fish bite out there, and more than likely you're going to catch a whiting. I said before that redfish are eating what's readily in the surf or wherever you're fishing at. All right, so in the in the winter, whiting and crab are really good. So when you catch a whiting, either you cut it in half. If it's a smaller size, you can cast it out alive. I've caught some giant reds on whiting. All right, so those are the baits that I like to use. We're gonna start over again real quick. Mullet, great, all, all around baits. Shad, summer to fall. Sand trout, summer to winter. Whiting, summer, winter, especially great in the colder months. And crab, great all around. All right, well that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this video here helps you land your next PB Bull Red. All right, what methods do you use? I like to learn from everybody else also. Let me know in the comments, what methods do you like to use? These tips here in these videos are among the most elite fishing tips you're gonna find in regards to Bull Red fishing. But also you can apply these tips to almost any single modality and fishing whether you're bank fishing for catfish sturgeon shark anywhere in the world that requires big baits and power this video will help you it's not only for bull reds all right so these are the most elite red drum tips out there like i mentioned earlier let me know in the comments what are your pb bull reds my pb is 50 inches and every time that I go out fishing, and this is what I love about bull red fishing, every time I go back out there, I am hoping to catch a bull red that is bigger than 50 inches. All right? Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And also, if you'd like to help me grow my channel, please check out my merch store. I have a lot of merchandise out there ranging from uh, shirts. We're going to be adding hoodies on there, stickers, everything. The funds from the merch store go directly back in the channel to help me make more elite content. Thanks, y'all.